Hi, I'm Niall from Gulfstream Boat Sales. Today I want to show you around a 2006 Rinker 282 Captiva Cuddy. It's um, in very nice condition throughout. It's fitted with a Mercruiser 496 Mag, 375 horsepower stern drive engine. It's got great performance. It's a huge, big, practical Cuddy with, um, with a great spec. It's got a GPS, VHF radio, an electric anchor windlass, extended swim platform, full camper covers. Um, and a tonneau cover and the boat's been well looked after it comes complete with a twin axle trailer so we're going to take a detailed look around the boat show you all the features on board and give you a better idea of the condition that this one's in this boat's a bit unusual in that it's such a big cuddy cabin in this part of the world you generally find like 24 foot 25 feet is about the biggest you'll find in a cuddy cabin sports boat this boat's actually 29 feet long and it's got a nine foot beam the interior space in it is on rail you know it's got a huge big cockpit Great big cuddy cabin as well, but it's still a, a day boat essentially. It's a sports boat, so it looks the part. It's got the striking red hull. The, the performance is fantastic from that 375 horsepower stern drive. It's got a deep V hull, so it cuts through rough water really well. Um, you can pull water skiers and wakeboarders and all that sort of stuff with it. But at the same time, it, it's uh, it's got loads of room on board for entertaining. So if you like to go away with a crowd of people for the day, you know, up to like 10 or maybe even 12 people. You can fit them on board this boat easily and it's unusual in this part of the world there's, there's not very many of them for sale but it makes a great alternative to a sports cruiser a lot of people end up going up through the ranks of the sort of bow riders cuddy cabins and then end up buying a sports cruiser just because they want a bigger boat and that's all there is really available but this is a, a genuine alternative if you're not planning on using the boat for overnight stays a lot of sports cruisers people buy them and just use them as day boats and they're essentially carrying around a lot of extra wasted space in the cabin uh, downstairs this boat you don't have to pay that penalty you know you, the accommodation is all outside virtually you know the, it's all about cockpit space and about day use um, but you still get um, really good uh, rough weather handling ability and great performance as well so if you're looking for a bigger cutting boat or a bigger day boat this Rinker 282 is definitely worth a close look. Rinker are a top quality builder. We, I know them really well and I know this era of boat very well because we were the Rinker agent for Ireland from 2006 to like 2011 or something. Um, this is an 06 boat. We didn't sell this originally. This boat came out of the States and it's had one owner here in Ireland. Um, but I know, the, I know the brand really well and this one's a great example. Very well built, really solid hulls. Um, nice uh, durable gel coats and stuff so this one still looks the part it's got that uh, sort of striking red gel coat it's all stainless steel boy rails stainless steel cleats stainless steel rub rails we've also got stainless steel anchor roller on this one as well and just taking a walk down along the port side of the boat you can see it's, a, it's in very good condition it does have a few scuffs and scrapes you know, a couple of little dinks in the rub rail here and there um, and a few little marks on the gel coat but they're very minor um, they're very minor issues and if you take a step a couple of steps back away from the boat you, you can't really see them um, the hull bottom is in very good condition there's I can't find any evidence of any previous damage or any repairs or, or any um, osmosis blisters or anything like that the boat has never been amplified it's always been kept on the trailer um, and just generally speaking it, uh, it looks in really sharp sharp order the boat's fitted with these um, docking lights as well, so you've got these little recessed lights set into the hull on the port and starboard side. They're great for lighting up the, your, your entrance into the marina or, your, or dock after dark. Um, they really set the boat off actually as well. Those combined with the, the there's blue LED cockpits, the lights all the way through the interior as well, looks, looks the part after dark. The, um, the starboard side of the boat is probably better than the port side in that the, the, the rub rail is virtually unmarked, one little surface scratch here and the gel coat is uh, pretty much unmarked as well we have given the boat a little uh, clean and a polish so it is looking the part right now um, but all the hardware the bow rails the stainless steel cleats everything is solid and secure on the boat the rinker uh, brand badge is in good condition we've got a vhf antenna here on this side and the, amount, the hardware for it's all, all in good shape as well um, and coming right towards the, the stern of the boat it, uh, it looks really good down this side as well. 
being a cuddy cabin sports boat, this boat's obviously got a, a big emphasis on, on water sports uh, and spending time swimming and skiing and all that sort of stuff. So the stern is well set up for that. We've got this um, nice wide swim platform with a three-step folding boarding ladder. And then we've got this recessed uh, jump seat at the stern, which is huge. It's actually big enough for about three adults up there. Uh, it's a great place for sitting and putting on skis, or if you, after you've come out of the water, you can sit there and dry yourself off, so you're not getting the, you're not, you know, taking the sea with you into the cat, into the cockpit, and keep the rest of it nice and dry. There's also a transom shower located out here, so you can wash yourself down with fresh water after a swim. Uh, and we've got controls for the stereo there as well, so you can, you know, control the volume and the, the tracks and stuff like that from the, from the stern too. So we've got that here. Um, we've got the central ski tow point here. We've got a stainless steel grab rail for helping yourself up out of the water. And then we've got, as well as the cleats on the, the transom of the boat, we've got additional pop up cleats on the swim platform so they slide down out of the way so you're not going to stop a toe on them whenever they're not in use. Um, condition wise, everything back here is, is really good. The, the stern corners on a boat like this um, are very susceptible to damage. It's very easy to swing the stern into a pontoon or something whenever you're coming out of a marina. So it's a, it's a common area for damage. But on this boat, they're perfect on both the port and starboard side. The rub rails are completely on mark and the gel coat's perfect as well. Um, so yeah, it's uh, condition wise, it's, uh, it's all really nice back here. This boat is fitted with the Mercruiser 496 Mag, 375 horsepower V8 engine. It's a fantastic power package. And it's matched up to this Mercruiser Bravo 3 drive. So it's a, it's a twin counter rotating uh, propeller setup. So um, the, the benefits of this are that it's track, it tracks really well on a straight line because the two, pop, the, the two props rotate in opposite directions. So it eliminates prop walk effect. So the boat will, will go in a straight line really easily without having to saw away at the steering wheel. And it also transmits power to the water much more efficiently. So it gets up on the plane quicker. Um, it'll stay on the plane down to lower speeds and just gives the boat generally much better handling as well. They're less liable to your, less likely to capitate through tight turns and stuff like that. This boat is also helped by this 24 de degree V on the, the hull here at the transom. You can tell it's a nice deep V hull so it cuts through rough water really well and again carving through turns and stuff gives the boat really good adhesion to the water. It's also fitted with these trim tabs. Um, for controlling the running attitude of the boat, which are, are really, you don't really need them that much, but if, you're, if you've got the camper covers up and you're running through a crosswind, you can get, the boat could tend to lean a little bit into the wind, so you can just use those tabs to just correct the, the running angle of the boat, and they're all in perfect working order. You can see everything back here is really nice. The, tri the, the anodes still have plenty of, uh, of life left in them. They're well above 50% of the original size. Um, the, the, the seals, everything's nice and dry. There's no leaks or oil stains or anything like that coming from the drive. Um, and the gimbal bearing and the bellows are in good shape as well. So um, again, this is a feature of the boat having, having spent the vast majority of its time out of the water and on the trailer. All, everything back here is in, is in nice shape. The bellows and gimbal bearing were actually changed this season and just this summer. So they're on typically on a three to five year uh, service interval depending upon condition. So that means you, you don't have to even think about these for the next three or four years. Um, um, and that's the, at the same time the engine was fully serviced, oil was changed, filters were done. So the boat is completely mechanically sorted, serviced and ready to go to the water. The stern of the boat makes access either from the water or from a pontoon really easy because again, you've got that full width swim platform, which is about uh, two feet deep, maybe slightly more than that. Um, and then, We've got the huge transom wraparound seat area that I said that will accommodate at least three adults. Great place for sitting for putting on, taking on and off skis, and or even just if you've got the boat at anchor, you want to sit and you know paddle and stuff. It's a great place to do that from. And then we've got this wide walkthrough um, into the into the cockpit. So again, you don't have to clamber over any seat cushions or anything, and the access in and out of the boat is really straightforward. Um, the the setup back here. You've also, as well as the transom shower and stuff like that, and the, the stereo remote, we've also got cup holders. There's one on this side, there's three over the other side. This is where the, this Rinker 282 really comes into its own. It's, this cockpit is just massive. It's like a dance floor. You, get, you, know, you could easily have a party on board this boat. Um, 
it'll, it'll sit at, 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 at about 10 people, so just sort of doing a quick calculation going around there. This, you can get bums at about seats for about 10 people in here. Um, and you still get absolutely tons of room for storage as well. It's a really sociable uh, layout. There's a table, a cockpit table, which goes in here as well. So again, if you're sitting having a picnic on board or having a few drinks, um, you can pop the table in there. And everybody's sort of sitting around, you know, it's easily having a con easily have a conversation and stuff. And whenever you're on your way, the, the windscreen is nice and high at the front, so it gives plenty of protection um, to the, the passengers in here as well. The boat's fitted with a, a huge big uh, canopy as well, a bimini top. Um, this is a factory, uh, factory set of covers from Rinker. Um, it covers virtually the whole cockpit, so it gives you great protection from the sun whenever you're out in better days. And the boat also has a full camper enclosure, so you can zip in a front windscreen two side screens and a back screen as well and you don't really use lose any space inside here so if you're using the boat in our part of the world where you know prone to getting showers and stuff like that it's easy to throw those covers up and you can you know carry on out and about the boat also has a tonneau cover a flat tonneau cover it goes over the front of the windscreen and just comes down at this level here which is great for towing the boat or if you're storing it in terms of the condition in here everything's really nice the upholstery is all in good shape. There are, if I really look hard, I can find a couple of little bits and pieces. Um, you know, a there's a little sort of part of the stitching here which is just starting to tear a wee bit. And there's a little thing, like something that's been dropped by a glue or something, I don't know, on, on the seat here. But, I mean, that's, that's about all I can find. Um, generally speaking, for a 2006 boat, 190 hours on the clock, condition's nice. These carpets that we um, sort of took out of storage whenever we picked up the boat from the owner, we put those down. They're in really good shape because they were virtually never used by the current owner. They were sort of kept in his garage. So they really set off the boat, I think, and um, they're in good shape. They're fully snap out, so you can lift them out, hit the boat with a power washer and stuff to keep it clean. And the deck and everything is all self-draining. Um, so yeah, generally speaking, in here is super nice condition and it's, it's just a brilliant, brilliant space to have, you know, whether you're going out with a bunch of kids and you're, you're going water skiing and wakeboarding and stuff, you know, you've easily got loads of room to, to swallow all your gear for the day and the kids can run around and you're not tripping over each other. Or if you're going for a bit of a party with friends, you want to have a drink and stuff, again, lots of space for, for, for people to sit down and loads of room, to, you know, places to put your drinks and, and prepare food on the little entertainment counter here and all that sort of stuff. So. It's a, this is a, an ideal uh, big day boat. Just to show you some of the features in the cockpit in a bit more detail. So this seat cushion lifts up and reveals this huge big storage locker. We've got the camper covers and things in here at the minute, which are all in really nice condition. Um, the tonneau cover, it's in the cabin at the minute, but it's brand new. The, the owner was telling me he only bought it for the boat uh, about two seasons ago when he's never had it on. So that's the, the tonneau cover's brand new. Um, you can see here we've got the, the cockpit LEDs on as well, so there's, there's a series of little blue LEDs dotted around the, the cockpit floor and whenever they're on after dark they really do set the boat off, uh, really nice. This is um, a little recessed and drained uh, area for keeping you know, ice or food or whatever, but storage space. Got this little recessed sink with pressurised tap um, and then underneath we've got this Dometic uh, 12 volt uh, refrigerator so it, it's it's a really good size that one actually um, it'll easily swallow up plenty you know cans and sandwiches and stuff like that and underneath this seat on the porch side there's a recess for for an igloo cool box now I think the owner has um, he can't put his hands on that right now but it's a standard size cooler they're really easy to pick up and that slides in underneath the seat out of the way and then underneath the floor hatch which again everything here is in really good condition the, the hinges and the, the actual hatch covering itself um, we've got this huge big storage locker at the moment, all the fenders and the dock lines and stuff for the boat are stored in there, they're all going to go with the boat as well, but um, I mean that, that locker is massive, it's, it's easily, there must be about six or seven fenders in there and they're fitting them with no problem whatsoever, so it's, um, it's really good to know that you can get all the sort of essential items stored away clear, so you've got your, your cockpit space totally unencumbered whenever you're out on using the boat. I'm really familiar with um, the Rinker boats because I, we actually have one ourselves. We've got a 26-foot cutty, 
which is the model just slightly smaller than this one. It's fitted with the same engine. It's got that Mercruiser 496 mag engine and all the controls and, and gauges and everything like that's virtually the same as on this boat. So I know, know it really well from, from personal experience and it's an absolutely fantastic boat. We've looked repeatedly over the last two or three years thinking about replacing it and I've never been able to find anything that sort of came up um, came up to scratch in terms of the performance that the boat has, the, the drivability underway, the rough weather handling because we use our boat up off the northwest uh, coast of Donegal and it can get pretty rough out there. Um, and like I said, it's, it's just, you know, it's hard to beat. This one is, it's got the same, same genes, the same bloodline and, and it's, you know, it's virtually the same boat. It's got a really strong, aggressive V on the hull, a 24 degree V as well, as the same as ours. Um, and the, the performance is fantastic. That engine as well, the 496 mag, it's um, 496 uh, cubic inches capacity, which is 8.1 liters. It makes 375 horsepower and it's matched up to the Bravo 3 stern drive. It gives um, a fantastic turn of speed. The performance is, is really excellent. They're very reliable. We've had ours, we've got about 240 hours or something on ours. This one has 192 hours on it. It's been well looked after. We've never had a moment's trouble with ours. Touch wood. It's been re very reliable, very smooth engine. Starts first turn of the key because it's obviously fully uh, fuel injected. Um, engine management system, the whole the whole works, and it's it's hooked up to these uh, these Faria gauges. So from personal experience of this type of power package in this type of boat, I think it is it really is an excellent combination to have. Taking a close look around the helm here. We've got this stainless steel and leather wrapped um, rinker steering wheel. This has like a wood grain effect dash and stuff. Um, we've got a full suite of Faria gauges. This one, the Taco has a digital hour meter in here, so it's showing 192.3 hours. We've also got, we've plugged it into the, uh, the laptop as well, plugged the engine in, into the laptop to verify that those hours are exactly correct. Um, there's no, also no fault codes or alarm codes on the engine. It looks like it's got a really good history. We've got a digital Faria depth gauge as well. We've got a four in one multi gauge. Now this gauge does need to be replaced and the owner is going to replace that. We've got same sort of problems in our rinker. That's the only weakness is these gauges. But this, these gauges are going to be all fully working by the time the boat is sold. Um, we've got a trim gauge here and a speedo as well. Now this boat was factory fitted with a Lawrence LMS 332C uh, color chart plotter here. And a matching standard horizon VHF so this all this gear is, is all in all perfect working order in terms of switch gear we everything falls nice and easily to hand we've got a blower motor builds pump accessory power for a 12 volt socket here and then we've got controls for all our lights and navigation lights and docking lights and, and all that stuff um, over on the right hand side um, and everything's in, in nice working order just here as well um, we've got controls for the trim tabs on the back of the boat and a really good thing about these ones is they have uh, LED indicator systems here, which is un pretty unusual on a boat of this size. So it means you can actually tell where the trim tabs are. A lot of other um, US sports boats have trim tab controls, but they've no indicator. So it's, you have to sort of play about to figure out where the, where the tabs actually are. This one with the LED indicators is really th good to have because you can tell exactly what position your tabs are in. Uh, the, help, the throttle lever, falls easily to hand at my right hand side here. The helm seat itself is a great wraparound uh, seat so it holds you securely in position. Whenever I'm sitting down I've got clear visibility through the screen and I never lose vi visibility over the front of the boat even whenever it's getting up on the plane. And it also has a flip up bolster so you can sit looking over the top of the windscreen which is great if you're coming in the berth of the boat or if you're pulling skiers and you just want generally better visibility over the heads of your passengers and stuff out the back. Um, you can do that with a flip-up bolster. And condition-wise, everything up here at the helm is, uh, is really good as well. One other thing I should point out is we've got the controls for our anchor windlass here at the helm as well, along with the circuit breaker here. So again, this is a pretty unusual feature on a sports boat like this, but that electric anchor windlass makes you know, anchoring the boat a, a, a complete breeze. You just sort of idle into the, the bay you want to anchor in and just you know, hold the down button. Um, drop it and make sure it's set and for raising it you just flick a switch and, and drive it up again so um, if you are going out to anchor off a beach and have a picnic and do a bit of swimming and stuff taking care of the the actual raising and, and lowering the anchors is uh, is simple we've also got a 
remote control again and a second remote control for the stereo up at the helm um, and the head unit itself is, is down in the cabin. So yeah, there's loads of cubby holds, cup holders, all sorts of bits and pieces. We've got full adjustability on the helm seat and I've also got a five position tilt adjust on the steering wheel as well. So it's really easy for anybody to get a comfortable um, driving position on this boat and you know you're you're nice and snug and you know you feel sort of nice and secure inside the boat whenever you're throwing it through turns and and putting it through its paces and stuff so what we're going to do now is we're going to fire up the engine so you can hear how it runs and we're going to put the boat through its paces in the water as well just to show you exactly what what that performance is like the engine access could be easier because it's got an electric hatch lift so you don't have to do anything you don't have to move seat cushions um, you, you just press the button at the helm and it lifts on an electric uh, strut. So as I said, the motor is a Mercruiser 496 Mag. It's an 8.1 litre V8. It's top of the range whenever it comes to, uh, to Mercruiser stern drive power. It makes 375 horsepower. It's a really smooth running motor. Because it's got that big displacement, it, the performance is effortless, you know, even from, you know, just like 1200, 1500 RPM, it just has a really strong pull to it. it. Gets the boat up on the plane with no fuss whatsoever, even with a full load of people, she's still got plenty of low, ground, low down torque and grunt to get the boat up on the plane quickly. And it'll run right up to about 50 miles an hour thereabouts. And it'll cruise anywhere in between, you know, it'll sit, because it's got that Bravo 3 drive with the twin counter-rotating props, it'll sit on the plane down to like, you know, probably 15, 16 miles an hour. The most comfortable cruising speed is probably around about 25, something like that. So it's a nice, fast cruising boat. You can get to where you want to go quickly and comfortably. And it's doing 25 miles an hour at less than half throttle as well. So the engine's not even having to work that hard. Um, so if you want to use this boat for like getting out to an island quickly or getting to a beach, your favorite beach, quickly with, with no hassle. This is great for that type of thing. And then if you want to get home in a hurry, you've got the rest of the, that, the power on tap to open it up and you know, get where you need to go um, in a hurry as well. So it's a, it's, a, it's a great motor. Like I said, our own boat, Rinker 262, has one of these engines. I think it's fantastic. It really is um, a great, great engine. In terms of the condition that this one's in, um, it is really good. There's no evidence of any corrosion that I can see. This is a feature of the boat having spent most of its life out of the water. Um, and it, the, the current owner was religious about flushing the engine through and, and washing it down and stuff like that. So there's no rust stains or anything that I can find anywhere throughout the engine bay. We've got two new, brand new batteries mounted over on the port side. Um, there's also a new mass reader which was fitted this year. So the boat has a, a proper a pump out toilet. There's a holding tank here and a mass reader system on board as well for emptying the tank overboard. Um, we've got three auto fire extinguishers. Everything in here is, is in nice condition. I'll just dip it for oil here as well. All the, all the fluid checkpoints are nice and convenient at the front of the engine bay. And in terms of the oil level, it's up to the maximum. And like I said, the, the engine was serviced during the season, um, but that, that oil is crystal clear. Um, so that's a, that's a really good sign. Um, and we, we haven't changed it since it came in here, so it's, it has run a few hours with that oil in it. So that's a, a good indicator that the engine is in nice shape. Um, and having done 190 hours, having done 190 hours, it's um, it's a it's a good it's a good number to have. Actually, it means that the boat hasn't stood around doing nothing for years on end, which is good. But at the same time, it hasn't been it hasn't done a huge amount. It's probably done a you know typical you know typical sort of usage, about 30 hours a year, something like that, um, 35 hours a year, which is a good nice um, nice solid usage. It's, it's enough to keep the engine going. And making sure that it's being, you know, the owners having to keep it serviced and all that type of stuff without being a huge big number that you you got to worry about, you know, service items needing done and stuff like that. So we're going to fire this up now, let you hear how it runs, and also put it through its paces in the water.
Access out onto the foredeck of the boat is through this open and windscreen section. Um, so you can get access out to the anchor locker if needs be. Like I said, it's an electric windlass, so you don't have to go out there to drop the anchor. But you can get out there if you need to. The, the deck surface itself is all molded non-skid as well. So you can, if you want to throw a couple of towels down there and, and sun pad, sunbathe out there, you can, you can use it for that as well. Condition of everything in terms of the windscreen, the hinges and the clips and catches, the fit and finish is all still really good here. Um, and it's all you know, top quality stuff. And then we've got a sliding first next door, given access into the cuddy cabin. Now the cuddy cabin is, it's just that, it's not, this is not a sports cruiser. The cabin is not huge, but it's still big in the realm of, of cuddy cabins. But this boat's obviously all about cockpit space. This is where the vast majority of the room in the boat has been given over to the outdoor cockpit space, which is on a day boat, that's what you want. But the cuddy's certainly big enough to sleep two people if you want to spend the odd overnight on board. And also for, as a place for kids and things to get down in out of the, the elements if, a, if a, you know, the weather goes against you or whatever, it works great for that. And the other great thing we have down in here is a full size toilet compartment. So it's a separate toilet compartment with a closing door and a proper sea toilet. Um, and that's obviously in a boat like this where you're probably going to be going out for a full day's use. From morning to night you want to have a decent, uh, decent toilet facilities on board and this boat has that. So we're going to take a quick look down in here now and just show you around. The cabin has your typical V-berth layout arrangement, so we've got a little table that sets up in here. This is the one that also doubles up as a table in the cockpit. Um, and around it we've got the U-shaped seating area. You can move the table, put in the filler cushion and then convert this into like a V-berth uh, double bed as well. Um, I just about have sitting headroom in here. There's not a huge amount of headroom in here because it is... Rinker wanted to keep the sleek lines of the boat, you know, they didn't want it to make it look like a sports cruiser, so it's, it's quite... Um, the deck line is very very sleek and low outside, but the, the trade-off for that is that you lose some headroom in the cabin. Um, you could probably fit maybe two or a push three adults around this table if you really had to, but it's, this is probably more a space for sleeping if you're spending the night on board or for kids to get in out of the way. So the, the stereo head unit lives down in here, and we've also got an auxiliary 12 volt um, power socket, and then you can see these little ribbon lights all the way around the, the headliner as well. Um, so they, they look the part after dark and then the, the heads compartment is on the port side just as you come down into the cabin So as I said, it's properly enclosed has a, its own little opening port light and um, a little dome light We've got a toilet roll holder and a handrail and then we've got a proper sea toilet pump out toilet Which empties into a holding tank on board and as I said, there's a macerator for emptying the contents of that overboard so this is um, on this type of boat, this is a great thing to have. This boat comes complete with this uh, twin axle American trailer. Now it is an American hip trailer, so it does have a big uh, two and a half inch or two and a quarter inch ball on it. Um, but it's a, these are, they're extremely well built. It's perfect for storing the boat on over winter or for launching and recovering and things. Um, very heavy construction. The wind rounds and stuff are good. And it's also fitted up with uh, LED lights as well. Um, so they're not strictly speaking road legal in certain countries, but I mean they're used all the time in the states for traveling big mileages, and they're well capable of doing it. Um, and this one's in, in nice condition, and it's obviously included in the asking price. So there you go. That's our 2006 Rinker 2A2 Captiva Cuddy. It's got 192 hours on the clock. It's got a really good spec. It's got a brilliant engine with that Mercruiser 496 Mag. Performance is fantastic. Really genuine rough weather handling ability in this boat. It's fitted with a Lorentz uh, GPS chart plotter, a VHF radio, it's got an upgraded stereo system in it. Anchor windlass comes complete with the trailer, full covers, camper covers and tonneau cover. And the boat is just really well, it's really well put together in the first place. Rinker build a really top quality boat. This one's no exception. The condition is very nice um, for the age of the boat. And it is a great all round family day boat. If you're looking for something a bit different than the usual, sports cruiser fare um, but you've outgrown your your bow rider or your smaller cutty or even sometimes we find people looking to downsize from bigger sports cruisers and a more manageable day boat size then i think this rinker 282 is definitely worth uh, a close look and a bit of consideration if you want to ask me any questions about the boat or if you want to arrange to come and have a look at it please don't hesitate to get in touch you can send me an email or give me a call or fill out the callback request form on our website and I'll contact you at a time that's convenient. Thank you for watching.